What's going on everybody? I know it's been a while, but I'm back to y'all with another video and this one is going to be about gender dysphoria. Now, first, if I'm talking a little different, like I got a list, it's because I got my uh, aligners in and so bear with me, uh, but I got to wear them all day. So anyway, um, gender dysphoria. So there was a young kid, I don't call him a kid, but a teenager that hit me up and was um, wondering if uh, he could do some graphic designs for me. Um, but because I don't really do the whole, I'm not in, I'm not in the YouTube for money and pushing a whole bunch of content. It's not really beneficial for me, but I want to put this information down and I'm going to link it to the video. Um, so if anybody wants any services from him, he does graphic, graphic designs and, uh, I'm gonna link his IG so you guys can get in touch with him. Um, cause he's, he's young and he wants to be able to buy, um, gender affirming clothes. So if you could help him out, I would, I would appreciate it. Okay. So this actually was his topic that he wanted me to talk about. And so, um, we're going to talk about, you know, basically coping with di gender dysphoria, like ways to like maneuver around it and all that. So type. first and foremost, it's probably important for me to explain what gender dysphoria is, even though I feel like if you're on this video, you probably have a good idea, but it's still my duty to <laughs> educate some people. So gender dysphoria is basically any stress or distress you feel over the gender that you were assigned or your body sex characteristics, meaning you don't like the body that you're in because you feel like you're in the wrong body. Meaning, um, well, his situation is him being a teenager. He um, wants to learn how to cope with gender dysphoria and telling your parents, which unfortunately, well, fortunately and unfortunately, fortunately, because, you know, it's my life. But unfortunately, because I really can't help him with that specific area, because I did not transition until I was right after my 26th birthday. Um, my 26th birthday was on October 8th of 2016. And then I turned. Um, and then on October 11th, 2016 was when I took my first shot. So me, I did tell my parents, but the way that I told my parents was I texted them. Um, not just my parents, but family members and friends. But I didn't really expect too much because um, I know what kind of family I come from. And so... You know, there were times when my mom would tell me, oh, you're not a man and da, da, da. And um, I guess trying to talk me out of it. I'm not, I guess, trying to talk me out of it. And I just kind of, you know, went about my life. Was It It was sad for me because, you know, I'm closer to my mom than my dad. Oh, so. But it's still sometimes I feel like it's, it's, it's going to be a journey for everybody. It's not just for you. It's the people around you and your family members and everything. It's a journey for them as well. And I'll tell you right now, um, I know family is, you know, a big part of a lot of people's lives. But the way that I always feel like if you don't rock with me like that, I don't have to rock with you like that. And I'm not losing out on anything. People that care about you are going to want to respect you. So if you find yourself around people that are doing stuff like dead naming you, if you have picked a different name to be go as, or people that are saying the wrong pronoun towards you, whatever, obviously you want to distance yourself from them. Set boundaries with them. Tell them, you know, this is how I want to be addressed. If you can't address me like that, we won't be spending any more time together. And obviously if they don't change, then they don't want to spend time with you in that way. Meaning if, if you can't respect what I'm telling you about how I want to be addressed, clearly that you don't care about me the way that you say you care about me and this time together won't happen anymore and go about your way. Like it's going to hurt. I won't lie. It's going to hurt to try to distance yourself from people that you care about. But the way I look at it, if you cared about me that much, you would respect the little thing that I'm telling you to do because it really is a little thing. People only make it a big deal when it comes to transitioning, because when we're talking about animals and you tell them hey my pet's name is this you know what i mean they then you that person easily calls your pet that name or if you know you there you say hey this is my girl dog and then they they say hey little guy or whatever the case may be like oh she's a girl and then they quickly correct themselves people do that easily with animals you know what i'm saying so it's really a respect thing uh, and if they don't want to respect that then you don't want to be around them anyway you know what i mean how I would imagine it being, being a young person that still lives with their parents, um, 
doing stuff like try to dress in the gender that you identify with. When I was in ninth grade, let me just say like this. When I was in ninth grade, I tried to dress like a, a, a girl, but it didn't really work out. <laughs> um, so, and because I had bought all girl clothes that year, it was, it was, it was weird and it was uncomfortable. I mean, it was, um, it was a bad time. <laughs> it was a real bad time, but you know, try to, it, you got to work with what you have. So try to use what you have to make it look as gender, affir gender affirming as possible. But just try to make it for as long as you can till you're out on your own. Um, that's honestly the best advice that I can give because if you can't, if you don't have people that's going to give you stuff and you can hide it from them and wear it when you're not at home, like some of your friends can maybe bring you something or you can give the money to your friends, have them buy it for you and they bring it back to you, whatever it is that you want to wear since your parents won't buy the clothes for you. Um, that's really unfortunate though. See, I never had that problem living with my mom because my mom let me wear whatever I wanted to wear. But you got to do what's safe for you, for one. That's the first thing, safety first. And then um, try to, you know, finesse the system any way that you can really think of. Now, as far as me being an adult now and, and dealing with gender dysphoria, I still get gender dysphoria, even though I've had all my surgeries. That doesn't stop. I think I, I'm pretty sure I mentioned that before, where it's not as bad as it used to be. It went from, you know, before I had chest surgery, where... I would always make sure I was, I would bind my chest and I would hunch forward to make sure that it was flat enough. Um, it went from that. So once I had surgery from that, then it went to me focusing on bottom surgery. Now I've always, I've always packed everywhere I go, I pack. And so, um, but then I have to worry about what was my packer looking crazy right now? Is it looking too noticeable? Or if I'm going to the restroom, is it going to fall out my underwear and, and onto the floor? Because that's happened before. Uh, or if I'm going to the restroom and like a public restroom and there's um there's only so many stalls and, there, and there's only urinals left. Am I going to try to stand to pee with my STP or am I going to wait until a stall opens up? Because I'm afraid somebody's going to clock me. And so, um, you know, I've went away... I went away from that type of dysphoria, but I still have dysphoria as, um, like, is it big enough? You know what I mean? Like, is my dick big enough? Um, is it sitting my pants right? Um, can you see my print? You know, stuff like that. Um, so it's not as bad, and it's not as, for me, it's not as bad, it's not as serious as it used to be, but it, it didn't go away, it just lessened. Um, and so... Some days you're going to feel amazing, you know what I mean? And you're going to feel like you're on top of the world and you're going to feel like you can't be any more affirmed than you already, than you are at that moment. And then other days it's going to be down. It's just, it's an up and it's a roller coaster. It's going to be like that. Um, some people may never, ever have gender dysphoria ever again after they have the, whatever surgery that they wanted. Go sit down. And um, that's cool for them, but that's not everybody's story. And so I still have gender dysphoria about my voice sometimes. I have this gender dysphoria about my hands being small, about my height, because I'm only 5'4". Uh, uh, I think those are the biggest ones. Sometimes. Dealing with gender dysphoria, if there's somebody that you can talk to, if it's not a mental health professional, then a friend that you really trust or a family member that you really trust and, um, you know, that's supportive. You don't want to tell your business to somebody that's not supportive of you. Have a support system. Um, there are people that out there that'll love you uh, intimately, that'll be your friends, you know, platonically. Um, that'll be your chosen family. Your blood family. Find somebody in your blood family if you, if you have that option. Um, but the most important thing is to find some type of support. They also have, I mean, it's not the the most intimate support, but they also have the trans hotline you can call, which I've tagged on to my videos before. Um, but you can literally just Google it, the number, uh, trans hotline, and it'll pop up. Now they have certain hours. There should be somebody on there all the time, but they only have certain hours because it's on a volunteer base. I'm so, pretty sure if we could help the way that we felt about a lot of things, we would change it because who wants to go through all of this types of stuff where, you know, people are not supportive of you. People are, have hatred towards you 
you know, people are judgmental towards you for stuff that you can't change about yourself. So more specifically, he wants me to talk about how to convince your parents of your gender identity. Um, hmm, that's kind of a hard one because, um, you can have a sit down with them and tell them, Hey, you know, I feel like this on the inside, but because your parents have this idea of who they want you to be, um, sometimes that doesn't align with who you're actually, who you actually are or who you're going to be. Um, and so they're going to try to do anything that they can to put you on the path that they want you to be on. But at the end of the day, it's your life that you're going to have to live. And so if it's not going to kill you to do what they ask you to do, to be safe, then do that. But because I want, I want everybody to be safe. That's why this is such a hard topic because I don't want to put anybody in danger for listening to what I got to say, especially when that wasn't my experience. Because again, I didn't transition until I was grown. So, I mean, I had already went to the military, got out the military, started another job, everything before I even started transitioning medically. So my advice about, you know, living with your parents and, and how, trying to convince them of your gender identity is going to be a little bit different than somebody that actually had gone through it. Um, I mean, to this day, my dad doesn't call me what I want to be called. I mean, as the most he's going to give me is my name. And that's because I literally, I literally ignore him if he doesn't call me by my room, my, 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 um, government name. Just have a sit down and try to ha tell him how you feel. If you can't sit down and talk to him face to face, um, try writing a letter to him. Um, I've, I've written a letter to my dad before. Um, it still didn't go the way that I felt like it should have gone, but I think he heard me a little bit. Face to face or write a letter. Um, you know, and hand it to him, tell him to read it when you're not around, if that makes you feel better. Um, maybe you can have like an intervention type of deal where you have somebody that supports you and you sit down and talk to your parents and have that person there with you to kind of be on your side and be not a mediator if you don't need it to go that way, but kind of balance out the conversation or make you feel more comfortable because, you know, you you know, you have somebody there that you know is on your side. Sometimes that helps out as well. Um, but like I say, you got to play it smart, play it safe. Um, if it's going to if it's going to cause you to lose your home. I mean, I truly feel for you. I don't know what to do in that case. Uh, OK, and as far as, um, you know, coping with your gender dysphoria and your attire, where would. Wear what makes you comfortable as much as you can. When I was younger, when I was in high school and I would try to hide my chest, I would wear multiple shirts. One time I wore five shirts to school in one day and it was hot as hell outside. Um, but that's what made me feel comfortable. Um, I always had on undershirts and, um, even though I, you know, I didn't have binders and stuff like that. I didn't even know about that stuff. I didn't know about that stuff till I was well into the Navy and what, what it was and all of that. So, I stayed layered up because I didn't want nobody to see my chest. Um, and this is back when I just thought I was just a tomboy. You know what I mean? I would, I would hide my chest at all costs. Um, I remember even as young as going into, uh, PE and, uh, in middle school and we had to, you know, change, change out in the locker rooms. That's when I started wearing multiple undershirts because no, <laughs> we're not doing that. Um, and I would go into the stalls and, or, you know, I would almost be late all the time because I would wait till like there was almost nobody in there before I took my top off and, and changed into my PE shirt. It got so bad. I would have my PE shirt on underneath my school clothes. And because they only gave you one set of PE clothes, you can only imagine. And I didn't wash clothes every day. So it's kind of nasty, but. That's how bad it was for me. And if you have to layer up, layer up. If you don't have stuff like you're not able to get access binders and stuff like that, don't use ace bandages because those are, you know, those are unsafe. Um, but um, you can wear like a tight T-shirt and then a bigger T-shirt on top of that. That's what I did. I wear my smaller T-shirt on the bottom, bigger T-shirt, you know, just bigger, bigger, bigger. Every time I put some a layer on, um, it worked out for me, you know. 
Now, if you want to do the whole um, Packers and STPs, for the people that don't know, a Packer or STP, STP is stand to pee, so it's a device that you use to stand to pee. And a, a Packer is something that you just put inside of your, your underwear or your pants, depending on what, how you want to do it, um, to make yourself comfortable that you have a bulge in your pants. Um, you don't have to use the ones that come out of the store. You can make your own. I've seen people use, no, well, I haven't seen them, but I've, <laughs> I've Googled and YouTube. Some people talk about using different things as STPs rather than the ones that you buy at the store. Packers, it doesn't have to be a packer. It doesn't even have to be shaped like a dick, especially. I've seen people talk about stuffing socks down in their pants and stuff like that. So, you know, just so it makes you feel better. So you got to be sometimes you got to be creative, especially if you're on a budget and especially if you're living with your parents. You don't want them to find out what you're doing or find your things or they won't buy you what you need. You have to make do with what you can. So that's something else to think about. One thing you can do in order to combat your gender dysphoria is to try to not be around your triggers. And that's going to be a hard one because. You're the only person responsible for your triggers. Like people or things can trigger you, but the world can't revolve around you and revolve around making you not feel triggered. It's your responsibility to to navigate that. So, um, yeah. So for me, I'm gonna use. I'm always using myself as an example because I like to speak from self. So for me, um, an idea of that would be. Um, not hanging around or being around people that obviously are transphobic. <laughs> so having those conversation of what a man or what a woman is or should be or should, you know, stuff like that. I try to stay away from that because it triggers me to be combative and want to be like on the Internet. Oh, that ain't that. I'm not doing that. So I try to stay away from stuff like that's going to make me upset or people's um, when they're negative comments or their uneducated comments and opinions that they pass off as facts. I try to stay away from that because that's not going to do anything but hurt me. Um, so know your triggers and try to stay away from them if at all possible. That can come back a lot of uh, gender dysphoria. Those are like the basic things that I can think of just off the top of my head. Um, <laughs> you know, um, Practice self-love as much as possible. I know it's hard because you feel like the person that you are on the inside doesn't match, match the person that you see on the outside. And so it can be hard to love on yourself. But remember, you got to love on yourself and go from there and treat. Don't let people treat you any type of way. Um, stand up for yourself as much as possible. Begin again. Safety first, but stand up for yourself. Don't let people just run all over you. Um and try to push their ideologies onto you. If you believe in your heart that you are who you are, that's who you are. And that's just how it is. And people are not, there's going to be people that just don't understand that. And it's not their journey to understand. But just because somebody doesn't understand your journey doesn't mean they get to disrespect you. Um, so if you don't have to be around these people, distance yourself from people that uh, make it. That go out of their way to make sure that they tell you all the time, you're not this and you're not that. Or you are this and you are that. Whatever the speech is for them. Um, surround yourself with people that love you. Um, your support doesn't have to always be in person. The internet is a beautiful thing for a lot of us. Um, find groups on, you know, be it Facebook or wherever. I don't know where the kids are at now. TikTok or whatever. I don't know. I don't TikTok, so I don't know. Um, make sure you find supportive people in community that are online. Sometimes that's the easiest thing to do because you can express yourself better for people that are strangers. Um, especially when you know y'all have that thing in common. Um, so try that. Try to ask people what they're doing. If they're doing something that you want to do, ask them how they got there. The dark times, they don't last always. Um, they do get better. When your circumstances change, they do, they do get better. When things start to come too dysphoric for you, try to do stuff that you love to do that doesn't have anything to do with transitioning. None of that. Just stuff like 
If you love to draw, start drawing something. If it makes you happy, if you love to sing or listen to music, write a script, journal, vlog, blog, make videos, whatever it is. Because I told y'all before, some of these videos I used for my own coping mechanisms. It was, it's great that it might have helped y'all out or whatever, but they were my therapy. If that's some way to like let something off off of you, let some steam off of you, or um, get your mind flowing, or just get your mind off of being dysphoric, do it. If you like to go skating, ride bikes, take pictures, whatever, talk to your friends, go see a movie, whatever the case may be, do that thing because there's no sense of moping around being sad about something that you're just going to have to learn how to maneuver around. Um, it just, there's a better life out there. And it's hard sometimes. It's extremely difficult sometimes. Life goes on though. So you can't stop living just because you're down about the way you may look or feel or whatever. It, I'm not saying get over it. I'm not saying that because you could never tell me just get over it. That's not how that works. But do something that makes you feel good. Two of these I think I already had. But I bought a few games because they were on sale like um, at GameStop. So I got these games. This one I've already had. Uh, that one I already owned, and this one I already own. I'm still playing this one. But I just bought these games, and I'm like, I'm going to play these games. What do I look like? What do I What do I need to play this for? <laughs> but it, it was free because I had already bought two. two it was buy two, get one free. It's going to be the free one. So I just grabbed it, and I walked, you know, paid and walked out. But just do stuff that, you know, whatever you got to do to get, your, get yourself out of that funk. Because there's life out there. You're going to find some people that you... At least you click with, you're going to find somebody that accepts you for you. You're going to find a group of people that accept you for you. You're going to find a group of people that's going through what you're going through. Y'all can link up on your trauma. <laughs> I'm kidding, but I'm being serious, but I'm kidding as well. Um, but y'all can link up and get some ideas flowing off of you. Y'all can come up with life hacks about how to, you know, secretly transition or whatever you want, you know, whatever you want to call yeah. it. So. With, with that being said, I'm not a master by any means about this whole transitioning thing. We're all just trying to figure it out on our own terms and we're all just trying to make it. And so I tell you all the time, you can always message me on IG or Facebook. If you, I have if you want to talk or you have questions, I, I always get back to people. People ask me the same question over and over. I still get back to them because um, I'm trying to be helpful. Uh, if you just want to vent sometimes, I'm here. If I don't get right back to you, just know I'm not ignoring you. I'll get back to you when I see your message. And like I said, you can hit me up. Talk to me. Um, if you feel like you are by yourself, talk to me. Um, message me. Um, so I think that's going to be it for this. So video. I hope that this video has been some help to, <laughs> to somebody out there. Um, and that everybody just kind of meets whatever goals that they have for themselves and um, that they have a great journey. You're going to have hiccups. It's part of the journey. Um, but don't let it discourage you. Keep going. Keep being yourself. Keep doing whatever you have to do to present the way that you want to present. Um, and don't let nobody tell you who you are. Because how is somebody else going to tell you who you are? You know what I mean? So go ahead and do whatever you need to do. You know, save your own life and be the, your own person. You know what I mean? So I hope that you guys have a great, I had the hope that you have a great Thanksgiving. I hope that you have a great holidays because I don't know what you celebrate, you know, after Thanksgiving. But, um, and I'm Kay Deshaun and thank you for watching my video.